Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. If you want to check out the first episode of the series, you can click the box over here. And if you want to support the series, then you can click the box over here. So last time what we did is we made our towers finally track our enemies by turning around on the little axis on their bodies. So I can now follow the enemies like so. What we're going to do this time is actually make the bullets or projectiles travel in the correct direction towards the enemies. And if we have time, we might be able to make it so that the uh, towers can be placed with a mouse click anywhere on the map instead of just pressing T. Because right now we're just pressing T and it's like popping up in a predetermined location, which is not very easy or helpful or good. So we'll make it so you can click the towers on the map. Uh, if not this time, the next time. Depends on how long this takes. So let's get right into it then. In our projectile class, we need to make it so that the projectiles that we fire from our tower head towards the enemy that we're tracking. Okay, so the, what we're doing right now is in our projectile class, we're just updating it by increasing the X right here. So if you'll remember, that's actually how our enemy was originally too. It's kind of what we do to just test things. We just say, all right, let's, can it move at all? Can it actually move? And we just increase the X. Uh, what we're gonna do this time is we're actually going to have it move towards an enemy. So right now it has no idea that there even are enemies in the game. Kind of like our tower was blind to the enemies before, we need to make our projectiles see the enemies as well. So in the constructor here, we're going to take an enemy named target. And we'll need to set that to a variable. So up here, we're going to make a private enemy named target. And then of course, in the bottom of the constructor, we're going to say this dot target equals target. And now that we have a copy of our enemy that we're heading towards, right, we have a target that we want to hit, we need to make a new method, private void calculate direction, that will tell us how we need to move to hit that target, or at least go in the direction of that target, because we might not have a 100% chance to hit it. Depends on the tower, right? We might have, like, homing missiles at one point, which would have a good chance to hit it, or it might just have, like, slow you know, bombs or arrows or cannon fire, whatever you want. But we're going to just shoot it in the correct direction. That's what we're going to do this time. So we're going to make a lot of variables in here just to kind of like extrapolate out the math and make it super clear what we're doing, uh, or at least as clear as it can be. So first off, we need to make some variables at the top of the class here, some floats. X velocity and Y velocity. All right. So this is gonna be the way that our bullet is moving every update. We haven't had to do velocity yet because so far, the only thing that moves is our enemy and it either has 100% of its movement on the X axis or 100% on the Y axis. But our bullets are gonna be going diagonal in a lot of cases. So we need to uh, make sure we can handle that. Just set that to zero. For each of those, this dot y velocity equals zero. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to say private float x distance from targets. I'm gonna be really specific in these variable names so that we can, you know really understand what we're calculating every step of the way. So obviously we want to get the distance from the target to us along the x-axis. So that would be, oh, uh, you know what? This needs to take a, hmm, should we pass in the target here? Or should we just use it? I think we can just use the target. So target dot get x minus x. We need to uh, cast it. There we go. Just go to the private. We're already inside a private method, so we can't then declare a private variable inside the private method. It's just kind of assumed. All right, float y distance from target equals target dot get y minus y. So x and y are the positional coordinates of our projectile and get x and get y are the coordinates of our target that we're trying to hit. One thing we need to do 
is before this, we can say math.abs and put everything inside of these parentheses. And same for the y. So what this is, is a method built into Java called absolute. So we're just getting the absolute value of whatever's inside the parentheses. And if you scroll over, it'll tell you a little bit about what that is, but all it really is, is if it returns a negative value from within these parentheses, it'll make it positive. And if it returns a positive value, it'll just keep it positive. So the reason we do that is because say the enemy's X is at 100, right? 100 X pixels. The projectile's X is at 50. 100 minus 50 is 50. So we know that we're 50 pixels away from the enemy, right? But what if the enemy is at 50 pixels and we are at 100 pixels? That means 50 minus 100 would give us negative 50. And so our distance would be negative 50 pixels, which obviously makes zero sense, right? That'd be closer than a zero pixel distance. So math.absolute is just gonna say, in that scenario, just return 50. If it was negative 50, make it 50. Whatever's in here, just make it a positive number that we can work with. So now we can have total distance from target. And guess what this is going to equal? It's going to be x distance from target plus y distance from target. And a variable we probably want to make above all this is a float called total allowed movement equals 1.0f. And so what we're doing here is we, whatever we calculate for our direction, as far as the x direction and the y direction, we want them to add up to be one. So the x is gonna be somewhere between zero and one, and the y will be somewhere between zero and one, and together they'll equal a total directional movement of 1.0f. So imagine if we just want our bullet to move Actually, a pane open here. So imagine if our tower is right here, right? And our enemy is over here. The x-axis, just pretend they're equal on the y-axis. Our bullet is just going to move straight to the right. So that would make our x movement 1.0f and our y movement 0.0f. Just pretend that that's 0 because it's going straight to the right. But if our enemy was actually right here, it might be different, right? If it's perfectly up to the top right of us at a 45 degree angle, then we'd have 0 0.5 movement on the X and 0. Point, I'm just gonna stop writing in paint because it's not turning out very well. You know what I mean though, hopefully. If it's going straight to the right, we're putting all of our movement onto the X axis. If it's going up into the right, we wanna split the velocity between X and Y so we go up to the right. And if it's straight up, then we just want all of it on the Y velocity. So our total allowed movement is 1.0 F. And we can kind of go in this uh, in more detail later. And you need to experiment around with this as well. Once we create this method, you could change this number and see what happens. But for now, we're just gonna have it at 1.0 F. So float X percent of movement equals x distance from target divided by total distance from target. And then we can have our x velocity equal to x percent of movement and y velocity equal to our total allowed movement minus our x percent of movement. So that way we're guaranteeing that together our x velocity and our y velocity will equal 1.0f. So those are the two things we needed for our movement, right? Because up here we have our x position, y position, speed, and then what direction we're going on the x and the y, x velocity, y velocity. We get on further now, we want to check some things. First off, we're going to say if our target dot get x is less than our x, we want our x velocity, oops, 
to be reversed. So times equal negative one. And same thing with the y. So if target dot get y is less than our y, then we want to reverse the velocity. And now in our update, we want to increase our x plus equals delta times speed. Uh, let's rearrange this. Let's put delta last. So we'll say x plus equals x velocity times speed times delta. And y plus equals y velocity times speed times delta. And then we actually need to call this method calculate direction. And for now, we'll put it at the bottom of the constructor. So we'll just say calculate direction. So this is a lot of math. And uh, we'll see if it all worked out here. So let's start the game. Oh, error. We didn't pass in an enemy in our tower cannon class. So in tower cannon, just go to, for me, it's line 48, where we make a new projectile when we shoot. And in addition to the texture and the X and Y and all that, we actually need to give it an enemy set or enemy now. So I'll just put in target right there. All right, let's try it. Press T to spawn our tower. Oh, it's going the reverse direction. That's exciting. Okay, so interesting. All right, guys, this is really embarrassing, but I literally just took five minutes coming through this code and cut forward. And the issue was that I didn't make this negative one. You guys probably noticed that right away, but I did it not. So let's make that negative one now. And now let's run it and put our tower in. And so now our tower should shoot in the correct direction. It's also very slow. But you can see when the enemy was up there, it shot up to the left. When it's down there, it shot down to the right. And when it ends at the bottom, it shoots down at the bottom. It's not perfectly lined up in the center, like one at the center of the uh, tile. And we're not actually firing from the center of our tile right now, but it's going from this tile and ending, or at least passing through the tile where our enemy is, which is what we want. So that's fantastic. So let's speed up the bullet quite a bit in our tower cannon class line 48 from 150 to 900. Why not? And now let's make it. Cool, so at least we're hitting our enemy every time now. It's no longer just slowly drifting to the right, it's actually detecting where the enemy is and choosing what direction to go. So that's fantastic. So the next thing we're gonna do in this episode is we're going to place towers with our mouse. So that's inside the uh, player class. All right, we're gonna need to change a few things in here. So uh, first off, in our update. Right now we can comment out set tile. We'll come back to that later because that shouldn't actually be in the game. Uh, we're not gonna be changing tiles once the game's already started. That's gonna be like in the editor kind of when we make the editor mode that we can make our maps in. So comment out set tile and to test something out, let's print out mouse button zero down. And the reason we're doing that is because the way we have it is every time we update the game, we're just checking if the button's down and if so, we're doing an action here, right? So we're not checking if we actually clicked it, we're just checking if it's held down. So the issue is if we wanna to click to place a tower on the map, say, if we run this, when we click, look at the console down here, it runs like four times. And that depends on how fast of a clicker you are, right? If I restart it real quick, if you just click for a little bit longer, it executes a lot of times. I'm not gonna count it, maybe like 10 or so. So let's go to this. And so if we're like gonna place a tower, we just wanna do it once. We wanna do it every time we click. But the problem is the game updates faster than we can actually put our finger down on the button and then lift it back up. So to fix this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a Boolean at the top of our player class. left mouse button down. And we're going to initialize that in the constructor. This dot left mouse button down equals false. We're going to assume that it's not held down when you start the game. And now in our update, 
we are going to check, as well as if it's down, we're going to check if left mouse button down is not true. And then at the bottom, after that if statement, we're going to say left mouse button down equals mouse dot is button down zero. And zero is the left mouse button and one is the right mouse button, by the way. So let's try this real quick and see what happens. All right, so now when you click, even if you hold it down, you can see it only happens one time per click. And so you can kind of figure out how that's happening, right? Every time we call the update, we go from top to bottom. And we're saying if the left mouse button is currently held down and the variable left mouse button down is false, that means that, wait, what do we set it to? Yeah, false. That means that it was previously up, as in not being clicked. So we're gonna count that as a click and do whatever we wanna do in here. And then after we do that, we're gonna say, all right, it's held down now. So next time we update, we're gonna say the mouse button's down and it was down before. So this right here will be false. So we won't do anything in here. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if it doesn't, I could try to explain it further next episode or something. So now that we fixed that minor issue, now that we're actually only executing the code in here every time we click instead of multiple times just because the mouse button's down, we can copy and paste this code under the letter T in our keyboard to make a new canon. Just copy that whole line right there and replace our printing with that line. And to test it out, we can run it. And when you click, the tower should appear down there. All right, that's working. But we want the tower to appear where our mouse is. So right now we're passing in a tile. We're saying get tile 18.9 for me, which just randomly chosen and arbitrarily kind of entered those numbers. But instead what we should do is if you look at our uh, method for the set tile, because remember we were already tracking the mouse position for our set tile before, so we can like draw the map. We're just gonna copy what we have right here. You can literally copy it or you can just type it in again. So for the X, that'll be mouse dot get X divided by 64, which is our tile size. So if we run that now, it'll still be in the same Y, but the tower will appear on whichever X that our mouse is at, as you can see here. Now let's set the Y, which is a little bit more complex. The Y is open parenthesis, height in all caps, minus mouse dot get Y minus one, and then get outside the parentheses and then say divided by 64, which is what we had up here, except it didn't do something right here. Get tile, mouse to get X, height, oh, close parenthesis right there. All right, so now let's try it. Now when you left click, you can place towers on the map wherever your mouse is and they will fire at the first enemy in the wave. Pretty cool, huh? You can make as many as you want. So I think that's it for this episode. Next time we're going to probably work more on our tower's aim. As you can see, they're a little bit far off here and they're not really going towards the center of the tile. Or we might work on actually killing our enemies with health and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys want to do next, and we can uh, progress from there, whatever is more popular. I might ask you guys on the Patreon feed and see what you guys think over there. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>